season week 17 is underway. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Oklahoma product, Baker Mayfield, trotting out there now with the rest of this Browns offense. It was so interesting in the run-up to the draft to talk with different scouts. I got one to tell me that in his notes, he wrote down, Mayfield, brash, happy-go-lucky, plays the same way, barely restrained improv act that frustrates opponents and sometimes his own coaches, but produces plenty of highlights. What do you think of that? A first carry now for Nick Chubb. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. A check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. 20 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown. Well, he's the number two runner in the league, and you just know the offensive line wants to get him to number one because most of the good ball carriers, they take care of their linemen. Could be a gold watch in their future if he becomes a leading rusher. Now here's a throw right side, taken in by his tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all off season about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. I ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I missed him, it would have been a long night. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. Mayfield looks to throw. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. Play fake. Mayfield. And he's got his man on the crossing route. That's Landry. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, he did everything but get him in the end zone there, but now they're set up. Golden opportunity, strong opening drive, and they're knocking on the door. And the way that they did it, now look where they are on the field, all right? This is naturally set up for a running play, isn't it? But with his ability to throw the football, his accuracy on this drive, you might want to think about a pass play in this situation. Mm, interesting. Time to find out. Mayfield to throw it. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Austin Hooper, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Browns take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. Looking sharp on that first drive. These guys, of course, coming off back-to-back -back victories. And you see that kind of advancing into this game, don't you? You certainly do. And when you have a team that doesn't get too full of itself, even though they've won two games in a row, you get the end result that we saw there, that nice opening drive because they're sharp, they're focused, and they're locked into everything that they're doing. Extra point by Seibert, up and good, and it's now a 7-0 game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. To return, it's Peppers. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. Leading them out, their six-foot-four quarterback from NC State, Ryan Finley. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. 
The numbers there for Connor in last week's game. 18 carries, 79 yards, and a touchdown. And when he went over 1,000 yards last week, you know what it did for their offense? It gave them a true identity because everyone's going to talk about this. The offensive line's going to take pride in it. Of course, the guy carrying the football will. But how about the coaching staff? When they go in and talk contracts, when they talk to reporters, hey, we had a 1,000-yard rusher this year. That means something in today's NFL. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Finley working out of the gun. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. Really? Really? Did we just see that? That's a big catch. One-handed, I might add to pick up a first down. I was going to say on third down for the defense, it's one thing to give up a reception. You just kind of shake your head on a one-handed catch to pick up the first. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 41. They'll toss this out right for Connor. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. He was hoping to get to the edge, but they did a really nice job of forcing him back inside. That's excellent fundamental defensive football. Don't let them outside where they can really shred your defense. Finley on play action. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. From the shotgun, Finley. The Browns D locked in on third down, brings up fourth. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. heading out as we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC and you can see it's no race for the top spot that's been decided these guys will hope to get through week 17 in one piece before they host a division round game in two weeks time and I think that what they'll do is they'll be very selective about who plays in this game all right there's certain guys that maybe are starters but maybe haven't played as much as other guys during the year maybe they still need their timing back other guys you're going to put in bubble wrap and put them on the <laughs> sidelines until we'll see you in two weeks. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A run for Nick Chubb. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one, and it'll result in a fresh set of downs. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Check, 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 
Running with Hunt here out of the shotgun. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. To throw on second and six, Mayfield. His pass caught at the four. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. On the carry, it's Chubb. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. This defense against the run, by the way, they're not top five, but they are top ten. So what's your philosophy here? Do you try and run the ball against a team that's pretty good against the run? And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb, his 17th touchdown now on the season. And the Browns add six to their lead. No success on first down. He couldn't get any yardage. They give it to him again, and he finds the end zone. Sometimes it just has to be persistence, doesn't it? And you know who else helps with that? Offensive line. After a team's been stuffed, the last thing they want to do is go to a different play call. They want to come back and do it again and show that they can dominate the line of scrimmage. Cybert on for the PAT. And it's good to make it 14-0. So this drive spans seven plays. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Pay attention, pay attention. Juju Smith Schuster and the rest of this offense heading back out there. He's within shouting distance of a thousand yard season, but you read the local paper this morning there was no talk of that mark they interviewed him and he wasn't talking about a thousand yards the old cliche focused on this game if he has a big one might be able to get the win and the thousand yards seems like he just wants to let it come to him right as opposed to trying to force it that's probably the right idea and the right attitude and he's taken down this will be a brown sack well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game they are already up a couple of scores brandon and guess what I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get up field and get after the quarterback. Been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Another try after the first down sack. Finley, and yeah, this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Finley here, third and long. And Paul has it. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, Nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Finley setting up on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And it's second down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. A second down throw for Finley. Back to Smith-Schuster, this time complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there and a first down. From the gun, a give to counter. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, 
but the running game worked in that situation, I would continue to go in that direction. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Finley to throw it. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Operating in the red zone now, Finley. He'll get this to counter underneath. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard. Line of scrimmage, the nine. Second and about a yard. From the gun, Finley. This will be caught at about the five. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. To the air again, Finley. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. A five-yard touchdown. And the Steelers are able to make this a close game again. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And that one makes it 14-7. A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Taking it about the one. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And that last touchdown drive, a good mix of pass and run. Defensively, they just looked a little out of whack. And it's so hard to stay up with an offense that has things going so well where you're guessing and guessing wrong play after play. So what you need is someone on the defensive side of the ball leader, right? to make a big play. Yeah. Throw that balance out of whack. That's what you're looking for now. Not worrying so much about guessing what the play call is. A gain of six there on first. <laughs> Throwing again on second down. Mayfield to the right side, and he's got Landry complete. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. The Philip Dorsett holds it in. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Going to the air again with Mayfield. And he completes it to Hunt. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. To throw again on second down, Mayfield. And finding the tight end Now a loose football, the ball comes out, and it's picked up by the Steelers. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B, one starts with an S, ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in, in meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. The first play of the drive there is incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Off the play fake, Finley. 
The completion good. This is Eric Ebron. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. He'll get that one complete to Connor. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. They'll contain him to just four, second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They'll throw again. Finley. Throw left side complete. That's Paul. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Third and short yardage. Finley. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong. And now it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. The Browns drive about to get started. And yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Chubb. Chubb will have the first down and much more. And all the way down to the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome into our EA Sports Halftime Report. A busy final day of the regular season. So let's get to it. We'll get started up at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. And it's the Bengals who are out in front. A.J. Green. Two touchdown catches on the afternoon. From there, we head up to the Motor City to check in on the Lions at home at Ford Field. And they trail that one over the visiting Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers with two touchdown passes. Finally, let's get to Indianapolis to check on the Colts at home at Lucas Oil Stadium. And in that one, it's the visiting Giants who have the lead. The Giants trying to finish that one off and claim victory. In the game you're watching, it's been Baker Mayfield with a strong first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon God and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. On second down, Finley again. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Paul. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. On first and 10 is Connor. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. 
Larry Ogunjobi there to make the tackle. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 47. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with Connor. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it. And the running game is starting to pay off. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And they'll try to throw now. Finley. Able to hit his target, Claypool. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook tough to defend because you think it's a go route and then he breaks it back on the comeback but there's one other thing you need as well a well thrown ball exactly right you have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route first down Finley looking left side it's complete he's got it and this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done down to the 15 from the 21 Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where would you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and ten. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Here's Mayfield. Looking for Landry, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 43. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. 
Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. Now he's flushed out left. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Finley working out of the gun. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Chase Claypool, his second touchdown on the season. And the Steelers have taken the lead. This is similar to baseball, where you walk the leadoff hitter and you don't expect him to come around and score. Almost impossible. Anytime a defense has to defend a short field, you usually end up seeing the result we saw, giving up points. Extra point now by Boswell. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory. Excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A gain of 13. It's a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Field on first down. Open man is Higgins. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A nice gain of 21 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. First down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Browns with a deficit. They're trailing, but with the football here to start the fourth. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. From the gun, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. On third down, Mayfield. And it's complete. Hooper. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 15-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. That's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. Okay. 
The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Now they return to the ground game. Chubb. And he takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Out of the gun, they run it with Hunt. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. On the ground, it's Chow. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Bryant's touchdown. Nick Chubb, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Well, let the natural light of today reflect that he has now gotten into the end zone two times. Look at you. You're a little uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Is that his name? No, I was just going with the meteorologist. Said it was a day game. I'm here. Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And Nick Chubb the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kicks away. To return, it's Peppers. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So with the Steeler offense on their way out, let's take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. And the division title, that's out of reach. We know that. This is as good a spot, Charles, as they're going to get. That first wild card and the number five overall seed. Barton is not out of the question, especially with the seven seeds that they have now in the playoffs. If you do win and the other wild card teams win in the first round, you could find yourself with a home game in the divisional round. Now, we know that's not likely. But it's not out of the question. Bottom line, you have to win to put yourself in that position. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They go play action. Finley. His throw incomplete. Chase Claypool, the intended target. But it's going to be second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. A second down throw for Finley. And hitting Juju on the slam. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 29-yard line. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. The throw over the middle taken in. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. One of the selling points at the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. 
A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. They'll run here with Connor. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. James Conner hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Steelers are going to take the lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Boswell good with the extra point, And they will take a seven-point lead. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. He's back to throw. He's got a man wide open, it's Landry. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Mayfield to throw. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. It was Minka Fitzpatrick that time to break that one up. He'll look to throw. There's the Washington Husky. It's Dante Pettis. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Back to throw. And this is caught. He hits Landry. And he is going to have the Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get ten here. Complete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking that time for Dante Pettis, and that'll bring up second down. This pass complete to Higgins, and they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 21. A good pick up there, a 22. And this is caught at the 8, and they've got it inside the 10. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Back to throw. And it's caught. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Cybert on for the PAT. Sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. So that drive in total eight plays. And the touchdown and PAT mean we are tied here in the final minute of play. So right back to square one, tied at 28 as he kicks it away. To return its peppers. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Let it go, boy. Let it get a start now. 
And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down and attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. They run again on first down, Chubb. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That's good for a Cleveland first down, an 11-yard pickup. They go with the ground game, pick up the first, now in plus territory. And that changes the whole mentality of a play caller, doesn't it? Once they cross the 50, they feel like they're in the strike zone. All right, You don't have to be in the red zone to take those big shots downfield or go after the end zone. Right now, that might be available to him. And now this first drive in OT continues. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. The first throw in overtime for Mayfield now. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he's got this down to the 35. 12 more yards there and another first down. They run. Chubb. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Ten more there, and another first down. They've had some success here in overtime with this opening drive running the football. Right back to that well. And why not? When you have that kind of success, make them stop you. And until they do, keep going back to that well you just spoke about. I think there's more water there and available to them. Two minutes left in this overtime session, and still all tied. Now Chubb. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along.
From down at the 12, it's first and 10. A give. This is Chubb. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. The last run got six. Now second and four. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. But nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Mayfield in this Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. Third and long for Mayfield. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Stefan it in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to at least get them a lead here in overtime. Seibert's kick is good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. They're able to put three on the board here on the opening drive of OT and now up to their defense to try and see if they can hold this one. I like how you framed it up because obviously this game is not over, right? They go down and kick a field goal, then we head to sudden death. But if the defense can hold, take the ball away, turn it over on downs, this game's over. And now out come the Steelers. The field goal would push it to sudden death. We just saw the field goal on the other end, but I don't think they are thinking field goal. At least not to start this drive, they're not thinking field goal. Not at all, because your point is well taken. Yeah, kick the field goal, you push it to sudden death, but you're also kicking off and giving the other team the ball with a chance to kick a field goal and beat you. Get the touchdown, finish the game off. That has to be the mindset. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And he's got it across the 50 to the 47-yard line. to see and making it extra special not only did I get four quarters with you in this one I got some overtime a little whipped cream on top look at you trying to make this whole thing palatable I just want you to pay for my meal later hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted but how much fun was that we had that type of a game where we got us to overtime and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well what a game so for the Browns They'll wrap up the campaign an impressive 15 and 1. And now they'll have the week off as they get set to go after a Super Bowl title. Meanwhile, for the Steelers, despite the loss here, they're going to wind up with a very good 11 and 5 overall mark. And they'll get their shot at playoff football as they'll be on the road next week as a wild card. <laughs> 